Hello. It is a chilly evening, chilly summer evening here in California. And today I'm going to talk about mental health and specifically the top five things that have helped me become more grounded and work through a lot of the mental health struggles that I had and still have. So I'm not going to get too into my personal history, but I'll give a brief overview of the things that, um, that I struggle with. So I think in, in middle school and high school, the, the biggest thing that I had was anxiety, just super intense social anxiety, um, which then lent itself to depression as well as an eating disorder later on. And um, when the depression started in late high school and um, it would fluctuate between these depressive states and manic states and kind of swimming, swinging back and forth between those two. Um, and so for a while, a few years ago, I was on Lexapro for depression and also prescribed Xanax for panic attacks and such um, and have, have been on this healing journey that's, that involves so, so many things, mental health being one of the, the aspects um, that has benefited from just the, the physical and all different types of healing that I've been, I've been doing and I've been able to do. Um, so yeah, I, I want to say that, that these five things I'm going to list are things that have helped me, um, and everyone's journey is unique and, and doing these five things doesn't just fix depression. It doesn't, doesn't just fix anxiety. Um, these are ways of, of, for me, like releases and ways of coping and working through things, um, as part of the healing process and they really keep me grounded. So I just wanted to share. Okay. So with that being said, um, number one is creativity. Wow. <laughs> I cannot say enough about creativity. Um, I think for a while I told myself I just wasn't a creative person. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really creative. And now in reflection, I think how, how silly that statement is because we are all part of a creative force. We're, we all have a creative force inside of us. We are born out of a creative act we are created so we all are innately creative um, and creativity can look different for everyone as well um, so for me I when I thought back to on things I did as a kid I used to I used to knit when I was little or just like play with buttons and create like collages with buttons and glitter and and you know I, I did creative things even if it wasn't like what I think of as being quote-unquote artistic um, and the thing is that there is such a an elitist attitude in the just artistic and musical communities um, because on, on one hand it's like okay it makes sense because like people put in so much time and effort to um, achieve these really great things but on the other hand it's really frustrating because it makes art inaccessible and it makes people afraid to express what their unique um, creative gifts are so create Yes, just like literally anything. Maybe that's baking. Maybe that's um, like writing a small poem. Maybe that's gardening. Gardening is so creative. Wow. Um, or maybe it's like uh, uh, creating a, like a mechanical um, car or an, an, an airplane or something. Or maybe it's mm, making tinctures. I don't know, whatever. Literally anything is creative. Um, maybe it's rapping. I, or even like wrapping gifts. I was thinking like spinning rhymes, but also wrapping gifts. <laughs> um, and I, okay, so something with creativity at first, I used to get super frustrated because I'd feel like, I feel like it was futile. Um, and like, oh, like what's the point of doing this? And then the more I started doing it, the more gratifying it became. And I became a lot less attached to its outcome. Um, like I tried wood carving, which at first I was like, this like, wood, wood carving, like I'm terrible at this. And then I realized like, oh, I have no expectation to be good at it. So I can just get immersed in the act. Like working with my hands, something about that too um, is even, has like, like a different type of gratification. So yeah, just creativity, you know, explore and, and do, try to create something for you. You know, set the stage, set your space in your room. For me, that looks like burning incense or a candle um, and putting on some nice music and then maybe just drawing. And, and I didn't grow up drawing. Drawing is something new to me. I love, I love it, though, because, again, there's no expectation to that. So just create something for yourself and then see what that can turn into. 
And um, for me, I find that that really can bring me out of those depressive states because, because also if we're talking about mental health, you can express what you're feeling in a creative avenue. Okay, lots about creativity. So number two is radical self-acceptance and self-love. So there are many people who talk about this, but a friend recently turned me on to Tara Brock, who is a spiritual teacher and really cool woman who talks about radical self-acceptance, which is honoring wherever we are at on our paths. So what this means is that when an emotion comes up, we just honor it without judging it. And if you judge it, you honor the judger that's doing the judging. So literally whatever arises, no matter how scary, no matter how, how awful we might think those feelings are or we think we shouldn't feel them because we've worked through them or this or this or this, we just honor whatever comes up. Mm, this, this concept has been really transformational for me, realizing like unconditionally I'm allowed to love myself unconditionally. It doesn't matter what my parents say, doesn't matter what my partner may say, doesn't matter what my siblings say or friends say, I am allowed to honor my path wherever I'm at. And so this is a practice and you know, I'll have I'll have days where I am just not in this flow. And then I'll have days where I'm really there. And it's taken a lot of time to even notice when I am there and when I'm not. But there's this sense for me of when I honor where I'm at on my path, then everything becomes a little less scary because when I'm feeling those intense emotions that I might want to avoid, if I just honor that I'm there and say, it's okay, Anna, you're allowed to feel that. Or if I say, if I say, I honor you, I honor you emotion. I'm allowed to feel this way. Then that part of me will kind of relax a little bit because it feels loved. So I'm, I'm, it's like the concept of self mothering or self-fathering or self-parenting, where you're giving yourself that love as if you were your own child. So that's what radical self-acceptance and self-love is for me. Um, allowing myself to feel depressed, allowing myself to feel manic, allowing myself to feel anxious, allowing myself to binge eat, any of those things that arise, arise just allowing it, hmm, that helps. So number three on this list is Honesty with others. Um, <clears throat> so a, a big pattern for me was like kind of hiding wherever I was at, um, always trying to be fine and putting on this this like controlled this this facade of being completely fine around everyone, um, around my family, around my friends, just literally around everyone um, of lying about how I felt inside because I was scared that if I was honest, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be accepted. Um, and on the healing practice, vulnerability has been really crucial for me. Just being, just being honest, and it doesn't mean that I have to share everything. But it really just means like if someone asks how you are, just saying, you know, um, I'm not doing that well right now, but that's that's where I'm at. So, or, and it can look. It can look however you want it to, just like with all of these things. Um, and so with my family, it really, it really was able to come out like being like, hey, no, um, I'm not okay. Like I'm struggling or this hasn't been easy for me. And sometimes that'll look like tears. Sometimes that'll look like long conversations. Um, but just being able to be candid, um, giving yourself permission to be clear with others that, you know, you're not maybe where you want to be, but that's okay. Um, and I think go, what goes along with this is boundaries, really setting boundaries, um, giving yourself permission to say no. For me, that was a pattern, like just people pleasing, saying yes to everyone. And so giving myself permission to say no to family and to say no to friends and whoever um, has been helpful too. So yeah, honesty, honesty with your process, whatever that looks like for you. Um, okay, number four is get outside and move. Okay, so this is kind of like two together because um, getting outside and moving the body are both good individually, but even better together. So um, a wonderful friend, mentor, sister of mine, Brianna, um, gave me this mantra to say daily when I was in a really intense place, and I still do it, um, not 
not daily, but I try to do it whenever, whenever I feel called to. So her advice was to go outside, put your feet in the dirt, so or the grass or the garden, just somewhere that is ideally, is ideally in the earth. So not not the concrete. Um, well, that's part of the earth too. But yeah, not the concrete, not something quote unquote man made like the dirt would be ideal, or the grass. And say, so just stand or sit and say, <clears throat> excuse me, say I am safe, I am sound, I am welcome here. I am safe. I am sound, I am welcome here. I am safe, I am sound, I am welcome here. And that can be really grounding. Just being outside in general has a physiological effect on us, reconnecting to the trees, reconnecting to this world that we inhabit, that we can be so out of touch with because living in the city and just living on our screens, we get out of touch with it. And I know the outdoors are, can be inaccessible or just finding spaces that feel safe in the outdoors. I know that can be super hard. So do what you can. Maybe that's just, that's just finding a tree in a park, a public park somewhere, or a backyard. If you don't have a backyard, maybe it's an indoor plant. Just anything that can connect with the earth has been super helpful for my mental health. And in conjunction with that, movement. Um, so any type of movement. Again, it doesn't have to be outside. It can be stretching, just a simple stretch. It can be a simple neck roll. If you if you are not if you feel like you you can't move your body, if that's not accessible to you, do what is accessible, you know, like moving your hands or my favorite thing that I've been doing recently is dancing. Just like dancing to whatever um, song I feel, but not necessarily in an intense way, just kind of like swaying and like, you know, jumping if I want to, but just moving in the way that my body calls me to. Cool. Okay, and finally, we have number five, which is community. Finding people that you connect with. So this is similar to honesty with others, except um, for me it's been different because a community that I connect with in a way where like mm, they really get my experiences would not be my parents, would not, would not be like family in that sense. It's um, a, a, a group of queer LGBTQ individuals or a group of other women identifying individuals who are like on this healing journey together or a group of writers. Finding community, um, oftentimes it's people in my age group but not always. And it's just finding people that you think, that you feel like have a shared experience that are on this path with you and that listen to you, that hold space for you and you hold space for them. Yeah, that community is super crucial for me on my, on my process. Okay, that is all today. Um, thank you for listening. And I hope that these five things um, assist you in whatever way they need to on your healing journey. Bye.